Hi everyone, my name is Alexa Matthews. I'm a solutions engineer here at Avalara. And today I will be talking to you about and also taking you through a demonstration of our Avatax product, specifically for VAT. Now, just as a bit of background, as I'm sure those of you who are familiar with Avatax will already know, Avatax was built originally as a US sales tax determination engine. Um, however, since Avalara was founded back in 2004, the Avatax product has grown and evolved. We don't just cover North America anymore. We now cover global indirect tax determination, as well as cross-border transactions, so duty calculations when you're importing goods into other countries. Uh, and we can also fully automate US and Canadian tax return filings and remittance. Now saying that today, we're going to be focused solely on VAT. Okay, the tool does do a lot more than that, uh, but that's what we're interested in for the purposes of this discussion. So let's have a look in that, at that in a bit more detail before we dive into the product itself. Okay, so uh, as I mentioned, we now cover global VAT determination and rates, including uh, enhancements for the EU, so specific EU place of supply rules, for example. And as you can see from this map, pretty much if there is an indirect tax regime, we will cover it, okay? We now cover rates and determination in 193 countries worldwide. Okay, so let's talk a bit about how the engine works when it comes to VAT determination. So when you want to start using Avatax, the first thing that needs to happen is that you will need to get uh, the source system talking to the engine. This can be done either via a pre-built connector. We currently have over a thousand connectors for uh, various e-commerce platforms, ERPs, CRMs, uh, you know, billing applications and so on. You can also build directly to our API. Okay? We have a REST API available for our customers uh, to integrate with direct should they so wish. Okay, so when that connection is made, data is passed to us via a get tax call and the engine will go through various steps to make an accurate determination. Firstly, we will determine the place of supply. So that is in which jurisdiction is this transaction taxable? Secondly, we will consider whether the transaction is exempt or not, and that can be either exempt with the right to deduct. So for example, exports into community supplies, or exempt without the right to deduct. So insurance services, uh, some financial services and so on. Next, we'll look at the liability to pay. Um, now both the EU VAT directive and also local legislation will be applied here to determine whether the liability to pay falls on the seller. That is, you need to charge tax to the customer on your invoice or to the customer who would then self account under the reverse charge mechanism. We will then look to the tax point, that is the time of the supply and then the rate based on the type of product that you're providing. And then based on all of these factors, Avatax will make a determination and pass a number of pieces of information back to you. Okay, now first and foremost, we will provide the rate. So you want to know how much VAT to show on your invoice uh, or in your checkout. So we'll return that tax calculation to you. Okay, we will also provide a couple of other pieces of information as well, which are particularly useful, not only for your VAT calculation, but also your invoicing and reporting requirements that will follow. So as well as your tax calculation, the first other thing that we'll provide in our response to you is any applicable invoice messaging, including the relevant article of the EC VAT directive. So in many cases, um, quite often when you're not charging VAT to your customer for one reason or another, it's a legal requirement that you state on your invoice why you have or haven't charged any VAT and also include a, a, a reference, sorry, to the relevant article of the VAT directive. Now, Avatax will provide that to you for you to then incorporate into your invoices and also into your own system. In addition to that, we'll also provide a VAT code. Now, for those of you familiar with Avatax, this is different from our tax codes, okay? An Avatax tax code is effectively an item classification and we will look at those in a minute. Uh, whereas a VAT code, what we're talking about here, is an alphanumeric string which defines the transaction from a tax perspective. So it will tell you, for example, uh, this is a domestic supply in France with 20% VAT charged. Now this VAT code will allow you to book the invoice correctly in your system and also to ensure that you have enough detail about a transaction to include it in the right box on the right VAT return. Um, because generally just a VAT rate is not enough information for accurate reporting. Okay, so that's a bit about how the engine works. Uh, I do just want to quickly talk about some of the recent and also upcoming enhancements in Avatax, and then we can go and have a look at the product. Okay, so just a couple of more slides to go. 
Okay, so as of February this year, we introduced version one of our VAT enhancements for the EU and UK. And this covers three main areas, the first of which is domestic supplies, uh, both where the supplier is liable and also where the customer is liable. So domestic reverse charge rules there. Uh, the second is international supplies of goods. So uh, things like distance sales, intercommunity supplies and exports, and also some more complex chain transactions. So triangulation is covered there now as well. And then thirdly, services, both B2B and B2C. And this covers digital services as well as general rule services. Uh, again, all of these are directive driven, so everything is based on the legislation, both at the EU level and also local lo legislation for any derogations, you know, uh, May provisions, which kind of keep us all on our toes when individual member states can choose whether to incorporate certain rules or not. Uh, also, as of July this year, so in kind of the next few weeks, there will be some new changes coming in with version two of the VAT enhancements. And this will cover in particular the rule changes around EU e-commerce VAT reforms, uh, so particularly around B2C goods, and then also some changes in the UK following Brexit, uh, so areas such as the added complexities around Northern Ireland, and also the UK's own import and marketplace rules, which are quite similar to the EU e-com reforms, uh, but of course will no longer fall under that regime. Okay, so now we've talked a bit about how the engine works and what's changing, uh, let's go and have a look at Avatax itself. Okay, now this is the Avatax admin console that you'll see when you log in. And first, let's talk about configuration. So when a new Avatax account is created, there are two things that need to happen. Now, the first is connecting the source system to the engine, which we've already talked a little bit about. And the second is configuring Avatax so it understands who the company is, uh, where they're registered and collecting tax, uh, what they sell and to whom. Okay, so effectively the tax profile, so they can make accurate determinations based on that. All right, so firstly, let's have a look at setting up where you are registered, so where you collect tax. Okay, so now within this, uh, in, within this section, we have a few different categories. The first is sales and seller's use tax. So this is for uh, the USA. We also have a section where you can set up details around customs duties if you're looking at cross-border transactions, and also another section for alcohol tax. And then finally, VAT and GST, which is what we're focused on today. So if you come and have a look in here, you can see that um, it's basically a tick box exercise. You tell us which countries you have a VAT registration in and so can collect taxes within that jurisdiction. So you can see here, for example, uh, this country is registered in Australia, Belgium, uh, Finland and so on. There are a couple of other pieces of information you can give us. So firstly, you can tell us when this registration was effective. You can also tell us if you deregister in a specific country and you don't want to calculate taxes there anymore. And we also need to know whether or not you have a fixed or permanent establishment in that country. So that can make a difference to your determination, particularly for things like uh, domestic reverse charge, which sometimes will be applicable to non-residents, but not to resident companies. You can also tell us whether or not you're the importer of record when it comes to moving goods across borders as well. All right, so this company, for example, uh, is the importer of record and has a permanent establishment in Finland and in the UK. All of the other countries where they're registered are indirect, uh, a direct, sorry, registrations, okay, so non-resident registrations. All right, so the second area that we want to look at is what is it you sell? So this is effectively what types of goods or services do you provide? The system needs to understand that, again, to be able to make an accurate determination. Um, depending on what the goods are, they may be standard rated, reduced rate, super reduced, or even zero rated. So we have to understand what your product is. And this is done through a mapping exercise to map all of your products uh, items, so all of your item codes, SKUs for example in your system, to Avatax's tax codes. And these are, as I mentioned earlier, different from the VAT codes, which are the transaction types. Okay, um, So you can see down here, for example, here's one where the item code is here. Uh, you can give an item description, should you so wish. You can also have an item group, so kind of a subcategory. And then the Avalara tax code. So this is mapping your item to our item, so we know exactly what it is you sell. All right, so based on these couple of areas, uh, there are some other settings that you can configure here. I think they're the two important ones to talk about when it comes to VAT determination. Uh, let's go and have a look at some transactions to understand a bit more about exactly how the engine works. 
Okay, so if we come over here and look in this transaction library, this will show you all transactions which have been stored within Avatax. So you can always uh, come in here, review your transactions and drill down into those transactions for more information as well. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, a couple of different transaction types, particularly around some of the enhancements that I mentioned earlier. So when it comes to uh, domestic supplies, um, cross-border supplies, triangulation, for example, and then also supplies of services. Okay, so first uh, we'll run through the creation of a transaction. So looking at the kind of information that would be passed from the source system into Avatax and then the kind of response that you get back. And then we'll look at uh, a couple of other examples to see the differences and uh, also some of the pieces of information that are needed to make that accurate determination. Okay, so let's come to add a transaction. Now, this isn't really a tool you'd ever use in this way. This is the information that would be passed to us via that connector or API, okay? Uh, so let's look at uh, a domestic transaction, B2B in France. Now, this company has a VAT registration in France, but they don't have a fixed establishment there. Okay, so let's say uh, B2B in France. We put in the customer ID. And then we'll put in the customer's VAT number as well. Okay, so we said that this is a uh, B2B transaction. So we know that the customer is a business because they have a French VAT registration. All right. Now we do um, validate the format of your customer's VAT numbers. We don't do a full VISE check. That's a separate system which isn't part of Avatax. Um, our transactions run very quickly, and so we don't want to rely on external services like VISE, which can be a little bit temperamental there. But we will validate the format to make sure that it's, uh, you know, the right uh, number of characters, includes the right type of character in the right place as well. Okay, so we're going to ship from uh, France. This is a domestic transaction to our customer also in France. And we can save that information and we can say this is a transaction for £100, for example. OK, so this is from a non-resident VAT registered business to a customer who also has a French VAT registration. We don't know whether they have a permanent establishment or not. Not really relevant in France. It would be relevant somewhere like the Netherlands, where we need an additional piece of information there to know that they are both a Dutch company and have a Dutch VAT registration rather than just having the VAT number. OK, so we know how much we're going to charge. Um, and we'll make this uh, a generic tangible goods, okay, tangible personal property. Save the line item and we'll make a calculation and you can see that no VAT has been charged. So this is due to the domestic reverse charge rules that you have within France. So a non-resident business making supplies to a VAT registered business in France shouldn't charge them VAT, the customer should self-account. Now, as I said previously, just knowing that no VAT is charged is really just the first piece to that puzzle. You know, you know what to put on your invoice in terms of a value, but what else do you need to do? Well, firstly, there's invoice messaging that needs to be included. You need to say why you haven't charged your customer any VAT. And that's due to uh, the reverse charge mechanism, which is referenced in Article 194 of the EC VAT Directive. Okay, so we will pass this to you and you can include that on your invoice to your customer as well as the zero VAT. And that's your justification for why you've charged no VAT. And then finally, we'll also pass you that VAT code. So this is in our generic format, uh, which gives you all of the information to understand what type of transaction this is. So it's um, uh, reportable in France. It's a sale, we have an S there. M for one reason or another means domestic reverse charge. Uh, it's zero VAT charged. You can see the three zeros here and it's commodities, so goods. And then finally, the ship from address is France as well. So you have all of that information within that VAT code to be able to book it accurately within your ERP. Okay, so let's come back and have another look in the transaction library and we'll see some other examples that we have in here. So a good example probably to look at next is a domestic B2C transaction in France. So this is really exactly the same as the one that we just did, except that the company, uh, the customer has no VAT number, okay? You can see that there isn't a customer VAT number in here, included in here. So the assumption then is that the customer is a private individual, so reverse charge wouldn't apply. And you can see here, 20% VAT has been charged. There's the amount, there's the rate. There's no invoice messaging because you have charged VAT. Uh, you don't need to justify yourself in this situation, but we do still pass the VAT code as well. So here again, France, it's a sale. L for local, just local with VAT. 20% VAT charged, commodities, 
shipping from France. So you can see there that we're making a differentiation between uh, domestic transactions where the seller is liable and domestic transactions where the customer is liable under the reverse charge. A couple of examples, uh, another example, sorry, to look at when we're thinking about goods. Uh, let's look at triangulation. So in this case, we are the middleman, all right? We are the company who never actually touches the goods, but we're making the second part of the chain sale to the final customer, right? And in this uh, example that I've run, uh, the triangulation transaction runs from Austria to Finland to Germany. Now you'll remember that this company has a fixed or permanent establishment in Finland. So this is where we're making our sale from and the goods are sh being shipped from Austria direct to the end customer in Germany. Now, there are a couple of things that you'll see here. Here's our VAT ID, the middleman, uh, that's us. Their VAT ID is a Finnish VAT number. So you can see that we have a VAT number in Finland, which is where the middle of this transaction is happening. And you can see that our customer has a German VAT number, all right? So we know that we're selling to somebody in Germany. You can see that we're shipping from Austria. That's part one of the triangular transaction directly to Germany. So no goods are going anywhere near Finland, which is why potentially a triangulation simplification could apply. We also include a location of goods or services rendered. Um, the final customer is receiving these goods or services in Germany, and that's kind of where we're making that supply because we're not shipping any goods to them. OK, if we come down and look at this, you'll see again, no VAT has been charged to that end customer. The triangulation simplification rules apply here. However, again, you need to include some invoice messaging on your invoice to your customer. And now there are two articles which are relevant. Article 141 for triangulation and also Article 197 for reverse charge where you're supplying across borders. OK, so there's two invoice messages, two articles that you need to reference for this type of transaction. And then finally, again, your VAT code. It's uh, a German supply here. This is where you're going to report it. It's a sale. We have T for triangulation and then the rest of it uh, probably looks familiar by now. OK, so we will also cover transactions where uh, triangular chains are involved. So where you don't actually have any influence on the goods, but you're a middleman in this type of chain transaction. All right, so there are probably a couple of other examples we can just talk about quickly. Um, I've included digital services here, both B2B and B2C. These will be different depending on the rules in a specific country. So you can see here, for example, uh, we're charging our Russian customer, so a private individual, 20% VAT in Russia. So in Russia, there are rules stating that if you provide digital services to an end user, you have to register for and charge local VAT. Now, there is a simplified VAT, uh, return form there, but you still have to charge 20% VAT to your customer. I think I have somewhere here, you can see a Russian customer for B2B, you also charge VAT. Now, normally for, for supplies of services, B2B across borders, you'd expect a reverse charge to apply. Russia, however, has very specific rules where you still need to register for and charge local VAT to your end customer even if they are a business there, all right? So there's a couple more examples and you can see again, we will always provide not only uh, the rate that you need to charge to your customer, but also any relevant invoice messaging, particularly if you haven't charged that to your customer for one reason or another. And then also that tax code so that you can book it in your system and report it on your VAT return accurately. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much everything from me. Thank you very much for your time. And I hope this has provided some insight into how uh, the Avatax solution can help businesses manage their global tax determination. Thank you.